Hello everyone, Joe Neville here, and in this video I'm going to do a Python 3 install on Windows 10, and I'm also going to install Visual Studio Code. So I haven't done a video like this for a while, and I thought I'd go back and have a look at the Python 3 installation. Um, also, so in the past I did a lot with uh, PyCharm, and earlier in the year, about back in I think it was May, I swapped over and gave Visual Studio Code a go as my editor and I really enjoyed it and I haven't gone back to PyCharm since. So um, well, let's get into it then. Right, here's Windows 10. Uh, it's a pretty new install. I've done things like turn the firewall off and annoying stuff like that. Uh, open up, what's this, Edge I guess. And let's go. So it's python.org. I'm after and that will that will have the uh, download section there we are downloads and so the latest version is 3.7.1 hit that save that should yeah that's only a few meg open that up so here is our application double click there Okay, before you hit the install now, right. So this threw me to start with when I was first looking at Windows, uh, Python on Windows, sorry. Uh, the fact that it's 32 bit when I was running 64 bit, um, that's fine. That's the default actually that you're given. So don't worry about that. Now, before you hit the install now as well, add Python 3.7 to path. So that's good to tick that so that uh, wherever you are in the directories, you, you, you can just type in Python in it will be able to find it because it's in the path. I don't know that much about that stuff myself. To be honest, not a Windows expert, but it is useful. Right, install now. Okay, set up in progress. So this is pretty quick. Pretty quick, pretty painless. I hope, he says. <laughs> okay, how are we doing? Installing. Right, so what I'll do while we're waiting, I'll open up my PowerShell here. Pit bootstrap being installed. Okay, setup was successful, jumped ahead a little bit there. Uh, just took a few seconds, but all uh, right. And this uh, extra box to hit disable path length limit. Gonna hit that, yes, thank you. Close that down uh, now. So, my PowerShell, let's see if this works. It might not, I might not, I might need to uh, reload PowerShell actually. Python. So all I've done is type Python in. Right, so it can't it can't find it at the moment. It wasn't installed previously. Let's open up PowerShell again now that it's fully installed. Fingers crossed. On PowerShell. There we are. So I type Python. There we are. Excellent. So Python 3.7.1. Um, let's hack the planet and uh, do a hello world. There we are, excellent stuff. So we've got Python 3 installed. And what was the other thing that I mentioned? So Visual Studio Code. So go back to my browser. And for this, I will go Visual Studio Code, there we are. So it's a product from, um, not to be confused with the other product called Visual Studio, which is quite similar. This is a lightweight version that runs on different OS. Uh, so you've got a Linux version and Mac OS as well. We're gonna go for Windows, obviously. So hit that, save. That's downloading now, good stuff. Go back to my downloads. No, oh, I'm in the way of my downloads, how annoying. Right, don't worry about that, there it is in my downloads folder, run, keep getting this warning from Windows, not too sure about that. Let me just 
So here is the welcome to Visual Studio Code setup wizard. Next, okay. Obviously, you're going to read through all this, adhering to all legal requirements. I've already read through it. I accept the agreement. Next, okay. We're going to hit next. Next, uh, desktop icon, yeah, add uh, these others as well. Add, open with code. That just means you can right click files and uh, go straight into code. So that's a nice way of accessing code. Now I've gone to the install. Right, let's launch it. Right, so this, so many pop-ups in modern life. Okay, here is the, uh, here's the editor then. So this is used for many different uh, coding languages, not just Python. So it's not like PyCharm that's Python specific. And one of the things that you need to do um, to increase the support for Python is install an extension. So you hit this box here. And you can see actually it's the most popular one, uh, Python at the top here, um, gives you things like linting. So linting uh, is a bit like spell check for your code, debugging and all these good things. So there's extra Python fun functionality that's come from Microsoft. Installing now, so that will take uh, a few seconds. Okay, so that did actually take a couple of minutes, I think. Um, it's in the Python extension is now installed. So I hit reload to activate. Okay, so now it's one of our um, live extensions. And I did say that we was gonna play around with a REST API. So a good one to play around with is on GitHub. So if you go to developer GitHub. Let's search for that. I think it's called this. Uh, okay, so there's different APIs on GitHub. They've moved on to this GraphQL, which is version four. But if you want to play around with REST APIs, which is what you get on a lot of software and you get it on networking devices like Aruba um, switches, then it's version three. Okay, so this is, I'd say like the, easiest way to get your hands on some data that you can parse and play around with and start interacting with a REST API. So just go here, because it gives you so many examples of what you you can do. Um, so if you've got no experience at all, this actually kind of holds your hand and tells you how to uh, interact. Okay, so you see this uh, URL here, HTTPS uh, API github.com users. So what we can do is we can just do a small uh, small program which interacts with that API. Now, uh, come out of here, so I exit there. I'm gonna do pip install. I'm gonna use the request library which makes your life a lot easier if you um, are interacting with an API. So this is a third party functionality that we're adding into Python. So the command is pip install. So this is a great thing about Windows uh, Python nowadays is that you don't have to add in these um, extra applications such as pip. Uh, it, actually, it comes bundled with it. So you saw there that I was able to just um, I didn't have to do any extra install. I'd installed Python, then I can in, then I can use pip straight away. I can install third-party libraries like requests. That seems to be all good. It's a bit of a warning about the pip uh, version. Not too bothered about that though. So let's go over to here. So this is my Visual Studio Code. Um, if you're not familiar with this, this is where you will play around and write your code. This is the file structure. I don't actually have a folder designated for this. Let's go in Joe and I will make Okay. And 
shall I call it Octocat. Let us, right, let's close this down. So I want to open folder. There we go, users, Joe, right here, <laughs> sharing my experience with uh, Windows file structure. So a select folder. Okay, I can close, that's actually a, a window itself there. So in there, I'm going to create a file called, I'll just call it test one. Give it an extension because I want it to be Python. Okay, test one, as you can see down here, it says Python. Right, so this is it. We're gonna start writing some basic, oh, I don't have linting, right? That's a good one. Hit that to install the linter. It will go off, fire up a terminal here for us and do an extra install. And what I'm going to do then is, let's play around with that API. So I'm gonna do an import requests, which is, which is how I start off a lot of, um, where am I going? I, Auto save is a good one. It's file auto save, import requests, and I'm going to do URL equals. So I'm going to create a string. So string is in quotation marks, and I need that. This is my URL. I'm going to go for that. Click copy. There we are, so that's my URL I'm gonna do. And I'm also going to add in a separate variable for user, which is another string, so quotation marks, octocat. Good, now I'm going to do create an object which uses request to interact with it. Request.get. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is the URL plus the user. So that will add those two together. And I'm going to say, close him down, he's moaning at me. Print R dot, let's go content. Okay, so if we highlight this, and if I think, oh, I'm not sure on a Mac if that's gonna work, so I'll just do right click. So run Python file in terminal, no, run selection in Python terminal, so it's shift enter, I'm on Windows. Right, so what it will do is it will run this code down in this terminal. Fingers crossed it will, is it going to? No, so it's opened it up, All right, let's give it another go. Okay, and what we've got then, we've got the print of the information that's come back. So this is the date, so this is interacting with a REST API right now. So I've done a get um, to this URL and this user, and I printed it to screen. So this is in, uh, it's the curly uh, brackets of braces, um, and in, Python, that's a dictionary. Now, what can we do with that? So, if I, now I'm down on the terminal, R, okay, that's the response, fine. Uh, what can I do? Point, if we go JSON, there you can see the information that will come back. And you may see like, what's he doing? It worked, the, I'm interacting using HTTPS to interact from using Python to send a get to a live REST API. I didn't have to log in or anything, which is the great thing about it with the uh, GitHub API. And you can get back this data. And that's essentially, if you want to play around with networking devices or other REST APIs, this is the process that you'll be going through. As m most people, use requests to handle this using any, if you're using Python, and then you send to a URL and you'll get this data back, and then you need to learn how to parse that data from JSON to get what you want out of it. So 
what can we how, how you just drill into the data that you want is with the square brackets and then a dictionary which of these is a key and a value pair so if you want to get the value you call the key there you go name so in that in, in this data here we've got uh, a name it's called octocat there's another one that we can get which is location San Francisco okay so okay that's like a, a, a just a crash course in how to get Python installed on Windows 10 and uh, and uh, and Visual Studio Code and then just get some JSON back from a REST API and start to parse that I'll be going into more details this is just the first video I think I'll start another series on how to do this um, so if you enjoyed this give it a like leave a comment etc plenty more where the uh, content of course there's so much uh, involved in this stuff um, and thanks for watching goodbye